Well, good morning. Hey, and everybody. welcome. I think it's, I think, we think, we yeah. think it's episode 15. It is episode 15. It is episode 15. Yeah, you're, you're correct. Because I'm has... thinking about when the folders are created in Dropbox oh, okay. to send them to Haley, the producer. So 15. It's 15. There yeah. we go. Yeah. So happy 15th episode, Radio <laughs> Reflections. <laughs> if I had like a noisemaker thing, that's right. The kazoo would, uh, yes. thing that spins out. Or, yes, kazoos yeah. are awesome. So, Kazoo. dude, dude. <laughs> So years ago, first band I was ever in was a ska band, okay, which of long, course. long live ska. Yeah. Um, and we, when we first started, we had a full horn section. I was just going to ask if we you had, had horns. Oh yeah. We had a tenor sax, an alto sax, trumpet, and a trombone. So at, over the, over the progression of the band, yeah. we actually, we, the first people we lost were our, our horn section to where yeah. we were down to just a tenor sax which i love i love the sound of a tenor saxophone yeah like i'll listen to that all day long yeah well we played we played a show this was for some youth retreat up north you know further north in michigan yeah and we went and i mean we're we used to have a full horn section well we didn't so we're playing we actually we played a cover of the w song the devil is bad yes I which know has like a is. pretty solid you know horns part and and to make up for our lack of horns, we actually brought out kazoos. <laughs> my my, it was great. My my older brother Aaron, uh, he actually I don't even remember how or why it came about, but he he did not normally play in our band, but we we're like, hey, let's bring in another guitarist for this show. So my older brother, who is a guitarist, yeah. He came along. He played guitar with us for the show, but he also he was one of our kazooists. It was it was phenomenal. Somewhere I have a recording uh, from that show, and it's oh, just it's all kazoo. We need to break that out. That needs so. to be some B roll like in this podcast. But. Speaking of speaking of breaking out like footage, so we were talking yesterday, and this is yeah. way we're way yeah. off track. But well, we're, we're only a couple minutes in, so yeah. we're good. So we were we were talking yesterday morning. Uh, what somebody brought up one of our services during lockdown oh yeah and and the the queue was a little late right so so we've got one service where like it starts off with pam is like looking around absently and rasika is like mid yawn and the camera cuts to them to like do announcements and stuff and and we we're talking about that so that got the idea going like hey we should go back and compile kind of like a best of like funny moments from all of oh, our that'd be good from the last you know <laughs> two years of broadcast yeah because you've got that you've got kinsey's train thing <laughs> you've got you there's just some fun antics with with pastor ryan and pastor ben brandon Pants. yeah so there's uh <laughs> we're like yeah so there's a uh, yeah, b-roll slash footage thing we have but, a lot of film in the cloud a lot of film yeah, yeah. well we've, we've streamed a lot of services in the last terabytes well, almost, dude. It'll be three years. March fifteenth. It'll be three years. It'll be three years since uh, from the lockdown was. Yeah, from the iPhone to instigated, instigated, instituted, yeah. instituted. Happened. Yeah, happened <laughs> <laughs> since it occurred. Yes, there you go. that thing that happened. Yeah. Well, episode fifteen is good. Yes. We're here. Uh, this is one of my my favorite things during the week, Josh. We say this every time, um, but coffee and it's okay. still true. Yes, which okay. you know what we've talked. We almost we almost had Jeff on the podcast today. We did, my neighbor Jeff, and we'll get him on here at some yeah. point in the future. Uh, I was talking yeah. to Josh. Josh, I've referenced him before. He just he thinks it's hilarious the way we do coffee, but he's cool. I think he'd be fun to have on here. Is is you talking about big bearded yeah, Josh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would have met, met you would have met him. So I met him. Yeah, he's he's a cool guy, and his he's daughter. He's got the beard and a so haircut is it of Rosalyn or Rockland. 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 Okay, cool. He's got like the beard and the haircut of a champion. Oh like, yeah, I wish like yeah, if epic. I could if I could grow that out. Oh like, man, I would. Yeah, uh, but I can't. So I look like this. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So we got we got to have him on the podcast, and I think it'd be yeah. fun to have Frank on the podcast. Frank, Frank, what's okay, up, Frank? Are you at home? Like, do you just brew up like some Folgers, or what are you drinking, Frank? Right. I don't know. Uh, I think he said that in one of the YouTube comments. I mean, he's yeah. like he's yeah. a black coffee. There, yeah. we are drinking black coffee. Yeah, no, for those that are yeah. like you know think that we're not drinking real coffee. This is this yeah. is black coffee. This is as real as anything your grandma made. That's right. On a Saturday morning. I don't know. 
I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> All right, so hey, what are we drinking? What are we drinking today? I can't, I can't taste specific okay. notes. You because can tell I'm by the back that. of the bag. Uh, this is um, from Madcap Coffee in Grand Rapids, which is a fantastic. Now we had Madcap um, last week too, didn't we? We did, but it was a different bean. Okay, I have quite a few different beans from the from Madcap right now. This is a Rico, a Rico bean from Ethiopia. It's a single origin. Um, single origin. Let's see if what Josh tastes. Let's see what Josh tastes. It's always going to be this, Josh. We're always going to ask you. I know. Now I gave you, I gave you a little bit of a hint when I said tartness earlier. Think about what it tastes like on the sides of your tongue, the sides of your tongue. What is that? How do you even, how do you taste it on the side of your tongue? The sides of your tongue, different p places in your tongue uh f uh t taste certain things more strongly i think i said that weird but I'm trying to like yeah tip my tongue over well what i say is like as the coffee rolls off of the edges of your tongue to the sides what do you taste <laughs> we're getting crazy aren't we? I, we are getting crazy i didn't know that coffee rolled off the my tongue out of the side Think sushi. Sushi? This is a clue. It's a clue. What do you- Tart and sushi. And you eat something with sushi. Well, you get- you, I do- I like pickled ginger. Ginger. Okay. Ginger is one of the tasting notes. There you go. Candied lime. I don't know, I don't know what a candied lime is supposed to taste like. Well, lime will have the tartness. And then lavender. Lavender, so like a flowery mm. sort of- I mean, it tastes. Here's here's what, good here's what I know. It it tastes good. It is good coffee. It tastes good. Yeah, this now, one's uh, smooth. <clears throat> this is this is a good question for our listeners, our viewers. Let's um, see if we can get it to focus. Do you all like sushi? No, it won't. Uh, throw us a throw us a comment in the uh, if you're if you're on YouTube, throw us a comment. Yeah. So yeah, sushi's sushi wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. <clears throat> um, hey, I tried. I don't know, you know, because you said, hey, we should find some reviews and read them. Yes, we don't. Like the only reviews I could find are like uh, Apple Podcasts okay. from a couple of years ago. Okay. So we need some people to yes. write us some reviews. At Spotify, you so, can't do reviews. Oh, really? No. Spotify has like some kind of a, I think it's a, I don't even know how it works. Can you do it on like Overcast? Right? Because you use Overcast. I use Overcast. Uh, no, but yeah, iTunes is really where the reviews uh, make a difference. Yeah. So. Okay. Here's what we're going to ask. Here's yes. what we're gonna, and this is not, okay. please, please, this is not like us, like no. self serving. Uh, because right. we'll probably keep doing this even if y'all think it sucks. Yeah. Because we um, have fun. But yeah, this is, this is a good opportunity to get together, drink a good cup of coffee, and, and talk about the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, email us. Right. Yes. Just, just send us if, if you were to write a review, because maybe you're listening and your platform doesn't allow you to write a review mm -hmm. or you're watching on YouTube and you're like, I don't know how to do that, whatever. Just email us your. Mm -hmm. Four sentence review. Yeah, good, bad, and ugly. Yeah, good, bad, or ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we yeah. would love to hear. Uh, we'd love to hear yeah. from you, and maybe we'll we'll read your review. Maybe uh, even some on ideas air. on air, so, right? Uh, yeah, you know, we're always going to talk about the message. That's kind of the the staple of the content. But maybe there's something else that is like, hey, or you have a question, right? And you're like, sure. hey, man, you sure. guys made this comment, or you said this thing, mm -hmm. or hey, I was there for the message. And I was really hoping you would yeah. tackle this, but you didn't. Well, that's good, Josh. Shoot us that stuff. We, we would uh, yeah. we'd love to hear from you So guys. if we get some of those questions this week, next week, whatever the discipline or spiritual practice that, that Ryan unpacks, we'll do a quick rewind and say last week we talked about uh, the secret place, which we're about to talk about. And one of the listeners or viewers asked this question. And we'll touch on it real quick and then we'll, we'll get right to it. Yeah. Uh, your best way, probably just shoot me an email, josh at the radiant life dot church. Easy. J O S H at the radiant life dot church. Not dot com, not dot, dot org, dot church. Dot church. It confuses yes. a lot of online systems. She's like, this isn't a real email address. Right. Like it is. You Trust could me. get all these um, extensions now. Yeah. I mean, there's every kind of extension you can think of. Yeah. Cool. Well, hey, so yeah. we did talk about the secret place yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, we kicked, well, we kicked the series off. Uh, not yesterday, but the week before. The uh, and now we're actually starting the the in-depth exploration mm -hmm. of 
each one of the disciplines. Yes. So we'll probably hit on the secret place again this week. Um, this coming Sunday, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he said we're going to do a couple of weeks on that. Okay. But let's jump into what Ryan talked about yesterday, kind of this introduction to the mm -hmm. secret place. What were your kind of initial thoughts and, and yeah whatnot. i mean the whole the whole message uh, for those that weren't in the building um or didn't get to watch it online um was based out of psalm chapter one verses one through six which was a really i mean i thought i was like oh that's a really cool it was a to approach it it was a really yeah a really good connection to the idea of of a secret place yeah josh maybe pull I'm up gonna, those, i'll, I'll those, read that for us here yeah that's great that's good. And we kind of did like a, a little bit of a, like a verse by verse. He did. He exposited. Uh, it was an expositional uh, uh, teaching. It was really, really solid. Got to find it here. My big fat fingers do not like turning pages very well. All right. So I'm going to read this. This is out of the New Living Translation. It says, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They are like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They will be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners will have no place among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. And as he set up this, you know, thing, he's mm -hmm. really focused on those first three verses. But yeah, yeah. You can, you, I kind of interrupted you there. Man. No, no, I'm sorry. no, not at all. I, I just thought that that was a great way to kind of begin talking about the secret place. And I think probably the best thing for us to do is maybe define first what that is. You know, what is the secret place within the disciplines? Yeah. I mean, so Ryan kind of gave two different you know, factors, not factors, aspects of the secret place. It's this idea of a, of a certain time and a certain place. Yes. Right. Which we talked about last week, this mm -hmm. idea of regularity. Mm -hmm. right? Habits. And, right, right. So you talked mm -hmm. about that. It's, it's this place where you get alone. I'll say that in quotations. Mm -hmm. You get alone with mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes. Right. Maybe this involves worship, time in the word, mm -hmm. prayer, right? but it, it's, mm -hmm. it's dedicated space for you for me to be with Jesus. Yes. So. Yeah. And I, I thought that that was the, the time and place idea is really important. You know, I think um, uh, not having that sort of regular habit makes it easier to skip, mm. you know, makes it easier to just say, well, I'll do it at this time or I'll do it at this time. So um, that's definitely my persuasion. I think one of the things that really stood out to me is Ryan shared a stat that, you know, in order to establish a habit like this, having a secret place in a time with Jesus, that is, you know, a certain place in a certain time, it takes 66 days, which was, I, I want to, I haven't asked him, but I want to find out where he got that stat because I had done some similar research and I had found some of the newest data shows it's a hundred days, which is, which is crazy. And maybe it was never true to begin with, but like, I remember years and years ago, they said, oh, it's 21 days. Exactly. 21 days, 20 yes. habits. So we're just, we're getting really bad at creating yes. new habits, apparently. Well, and, and the so. data that I found was, here's the craziest thing. If you get to day 99 and you miss that one day, you start over. <laughs> you, you won't, it, it, the, stat, the, the stat was showing, it's not going to be a habit until you do it daily for a hundred days. Hmm. Um, so having a, a certain time and a certain place what does that look like uh, I, I was trying to decide how we would unpack this josh because it's a secret place so right. how much do we talk about it yeah and that and that you know what okay but yeah. that right there is an interesting question right like right. when we when we use that word secret right like what is that what does that actually mean? yeah yeah i i don't think it means that you don't tell people about it or you don't talk about it now the only command we taught we see related to this time and place when Jesus says that you pray in secret. So one of yes. the aspects of, of the practice of having a secret place is prayer, which, you know, we don't just go and. And even that, right. There's, yeah. there's different types. Cause you also see modeled in scripture community corporate. Prayer. Yes. Yes. Right? So, yeah. So you've got some, but there are, you know, when, when Jesus talks about, cause he talks about prayer, mm -hmm. you go to your prayer closet. He talks mm -hmm. about fasting, mm -hmm. right. And, and giving. 
talks about these things having a, a in a sense a secretive component mm-hmm. in that these are not to be done to draw attention to yourself right right in in uh matthew jesus is having this conversation with his disciples and as he's teaching them these these things he he draws this comparison he says hey don't be like you know the pharisees yeah. who you know they sit there and they make these lengthy prayers mm-hmm. and they blah 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 you to know? be heard by men right when they fast they mm-hmm. make themselves look disheveled and they you yes. know it's like clearly they are they're yeah. fast you know he he goes against that yeah so there are some disciplines that there is a more secretive component mm-hmm. but this is more just that uh that idea right where where scripture says jesus went to a deserted place mm-hmm. but he went alone to be right it's it's looking at that example mm-hmm. and saying hey this is something that we should do uh you know in our in our walks yeah so which you know maybe you've used a different word right over the course of your life maybe you, you talk about your time in the word is oh, i've got to do my devotions mm-hmm. or you've got to have your quiet time mm-hmm. uh my wife and i we actually we we punted on that term quiet time okay uh and we actually refer to it as intentional time with jesus hmm T- t- we've got uh, talk about why so we've got six kids at home uh <laughs> my youngest is three my oldest is 14 boatloads right? and this was this was a couple of years ago we we made th- this switch in our vocabulary yeah uh because because quite frankly quiet uh is elusive <laughs> not in this season <laughs> in this season in this season, in this season. Yes. it can be challenging and here's the thing right and in this you know, Pastor Ryan, like he knows, he and I, we banter back and forth about this. Yeah. Well, so I think I'm like that. I'm the odd man out of the of the pastoral <laughs> staff on this. But, you know, it's, yeah. you say, oh, hey, just, you know, wake up earlier, right? Yeah. I've done that. I'll be like, hey, fine. I'm going to set my alarm, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes yeah. earlier. The earlier I get up, the earlier my kids get up. Like there's, like they sense the vibrations clock. in the floor and they're yeah. like, oh, somebody's awake. I'm yeah. getting up too. Um, yep. So yeah, so there's 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 not really a yeah. unless I lock my kids in the basement. Yeah, you can't do you know, that. Like it's yeah. probably not going to be this totally un- uninterrupted time. Yeah. But then on the flip side, it's like, hey, how cool is this? That I mean, my kids get to actually see me. Yeah, and be part of. Oh, hey, what are you doing, Dad? Like, yeah, I'm reading scripture. Yeah, doing that kind of thing. I yeah. remember. I actually remember that of my parents. Mm-hmm. My parents, they would before they would get out of bed, right? I remember you know going into their room like. When I was a kid, right, and there they are. They're reading scripture together, like they're doing all this stuff. So, yeah, right. that was a cool. That was a cool example to actually get to see. That is, uh, but yeah. So you can maybe you call it something different: devotions, mm-hmm. quiet time, intentional time with Jesus. Whatever it's it's this it's this dedicated time for you to get together with Jesus and mm-hmm. and, and hang out. Whether that's through the Word, through worship, through prayer. Yeah, yeah. Silence and solitude. I mean, yeah. all. All the disciplines can can overlap into that space. I think I agree, and the point I think too, and what we learned uh, going through Psalms is, if you want to be healthy, if you want to grow, if you want to be ultimately fruitful, the picture in Psalm one is this tree, right? This this really really strong tree that's planted uh, next to living waters, um, and that that secret place is the living waters. Mm where the nutrients are taken up into the roots of this tree and then through the trunk and then out through the limbs and branches. And then of course, bearing whatever fruit that tree is supposed to bear. Um, the, the point I think of the secret place is that you must have it. Mm. You must have it. You can't make it in this life without having a secret place, which is a time and a space to be with Jesus. If Jesus had to go, Josh, you said a moment ago, Jesus made active decisions to go to the deserted place. This was uh, before iPhones. This was before the printing press. This was before all of the things that utterly and completely distract us in the world that we live. If Jesus chose to go to the deserted place, how much more should we have a deserted place, a secret place, a time and a space to spend with the Father, to spend with Jesus, to spend with mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. And and that space might look, again, it might look differently for you. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Have it though. <laughs> you must have, have it. it. Though. Have it though. Yeah. And that's where that's where it's this it's this fine line, right? This tension point between mm-hmm. uh, being legalistic and saying, oh, well, you have to do this. Right. Well, again, like, 
again, yours might look different than JB's or mine right. or, you know, Pastor Ryan's or Pastor Brent, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but, but do something, do something. How, how are you going to, to grow in, in your faith in Christ? How are you going to, how is your life going to resemble the life of Christ more mm -hmm. if you are not engaging in the things that he did? And if mm -hmm. you're not engaged in the practices that we know, uh, you know, bring transformation, mm -hmm. right? It's, I don't know. Again, it's, it, it's like we talked about last week. It's, it's hoping that you're going to get strong without ever working out. Yeah. Right? It's impossible. It's impossible. And you can't grow what you don't track. Like you can't. Yeah. You, you hit on that. last. It, week it's and impossible. Really and it's, and it's in every aspect of our lives, whether it's your finances, whether it's the way that you eat, whether it's exercise, whether it's time with Jesus and the data that we know is like, if you spend one to three days in the word of God, and we're not even talking quantifiably, just that you are there. Right. You crack, you crack the cover and you read something three right. days a week. Nothing will change in your life. Virtually nothing will happen in your life to become more like a follower, an apprentice, a, a disciple of Jesus. But you tip that scale to four times per week and then five and six and seven, your life when the majority of the week is you in the word, some in some way, your life will begin to change. You will become different mm. than you are. And uh, I think that was that was the point that Ryan was making. No, that's good. That's yeah. good. So yeah, um, maybe for you the challenge is going to be, and, and maybe you issued this challenge last week, right? Like if if you're in that zero to three times a week right now, mm -hmm. dedicate it and say, hey, this week I'm going to do four. Next week I'm going to do four. Start there. Mm -hmm. Start there. That yeah. that that does seem to be like a a point of of mm -hmm. change. Yeah. Uh, and again that looks different for you maybe you need to put in place some action triggers you know so uh my wife actually does this so for yep. my wife she says hey i'm not gonna i'm not gonna pick up my phone in the morning until i have spent my time with jesus right for her i mean i'm i'm leaving for work my wife is there she's still got the kids again the kids are there yeah two of them anyways and but she's saying hey i'm gonna i'm gonna do this i'm gonna spend my time with jesus and i'm not gonna touch my phone until that happens so, so there's like a, I want to be bold and say that what Nicole is doing, everyone should do. Mm. I don't, I don't think just because of the nature of what, a, what the iPhone or the Android phone, whatever it is you have, the nature of what this thing does, what it actually is by, by its very definition, it's, it's, it's just this giant, uh, uh, marketing tool that shapes your behavior. That's what it is. And JB's if, coming out swinging. I like I'm it. serious, man. Nicole's got it right. Nicole's got it right. I made this change several years ago. Um, and and I, I got an old school uh, alarm clock off of Amazon, a $10 alarm clock, and my phone doesn't go in my room. And I don't touch it until um, a couple hours into my day because I don't, I, I don't, whatever you put your mind to first and whatever you put your mind to last in the day. It's going to shape your day and it's going to shape your sleep. And this, well, I mean, and that's to not even get into the, uh, the whole blue light issue with yeah. phones and how Which the way that recent your study sleep says and... that's, that's not true. It's not true. Okay. So you're more right up on, I got the blue light glasses there. I don't need actual glasses, but I wore them on my computer. It's some study recently debunked that. Huh? This is the problem with studies, right? Like they, they prove Opposing. Eggs are bad for you. Eggs are good oh, wait, for you. They're actually good. No, they're bad again. They're bad. <laughs> but don't do butter. Oh wait, butter is good. Margarine is terrible. Butter's good. I don't. I don't know. At yeah. some point, we're all going to die, and something's going to kill us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, eat your eggs and butter, whatever. Uh, but the phone will definitely be a, an absolute distraction. It's going to be an absolute mm. distraction to that time, and and I, I would I would encourage you to to prayerfully consider doing that as a practice. Say. You know, even if you're if you're choosing four days out of the week, like Josh is saying, to get into this secret place and spend five minutes with the Lord, you can wait five minutes to check your email. You can wait five minutes to check the text message. You can wait five minutes to check Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and Twitter and all these marketing. But apps. life life will go on if you don't mm -hmm. refresh your feed. Uh, you know, first thing in the morning. Yes, so. but uh, I commend Nicole for that. And you as her husband, I'm sure since you, she has made that decision, her life is different. She's changed. Oh as yeah. A I mean, you can see, and again, she's, she's awesome with, with just her, her discipline and, mm -hmm. and staying engaged. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I think she's, she's better at it than I am sometimes, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, 
but it's good. Now this is an area too, though, right? So you you said start start the day, end the day, uh, and mm-hmm. this is where we we find uh, sometimes a point of contention mm-hmm. uh, amongst people. When I say amongst people, I mean amongst the, <laughs> the staff. Now I I did appreciate I appreciated yesterday that uh, that Ryan gave us both the morning and the evening yes. passages. So that he was did. good. He did so. I, I used to be, so he asked, he asked the question in service. Hey, are you yeah. a morning person? Or are you a night owl? Yeah. I'm neither. I used to be a morning person. Okay. And I used to like before having kids, like yeah. that was my, that was my quiet time. Okay. Like it was, it was, Hey, I'd, I'm going to wake That's up. That's interesting, Josh. I've never so, heard you say that before. So yeah, it okay. was, uh, I, I was a morning person that all went out the window uh <laughs> kids kids, kids change stuff man with the kids oh boy so oh again boy. so then it was more of a more of the evening thing like yeah. I, get, I get the kids to bed this is my space yeah now i'm gonna create that so yeah i but still we, think that the bookend is important and, and here's what i'll say to you josh i don't think it's necessarily about what ryan challenged everyone to get up earlier because he said that he's like maybe maybe you need to watch less netflix and 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 get up earlier that could be true for some folks it may not be but i would say the challenge to folks who may be in a season like you where man the logistics just aren't gonna make that shake out still start your day with a single scripture or a single well, prayer the, yes 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 and the, and this is an important and then distinction, do the bulk on right? the end this is a, this is an important distinction too right when we talk about the secret yeah. blades that is not always all right i've got to have an hour right and i've got to read x number of chapters it's got not to, quantifiable no no, 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 no. like it, that's that's not the point mm-hmm. so that's where yeah in the morning mm-hmm. it's one of those things where mm-hmm. man my alarm goes off I do my, did I talk about my five, four, three, two, one countdown last week? No. Oh, no. Uh, I'm so excited this is about this. Shout out to Derek. Uh, this is something that Derek mentioned to me in a totally unrelated conversation. But he said, oh, yeah, like you should try when your alarm goes off. You you know, say five, four, three, two, one, you get up. Because, man, I'm I'm tired. I don't, I don't always sleep real great. Mm-hmm. So, so sometimes it's a, it's a struggle to drag my carcass out of bed in the morning. Oh, I see. So he says, hey, your alarm goes off. You count down five, four, three, two, one. And you get up. And so I've done that actually. Just one hits the, your feet. Your feet hit the floor. You're, you're, okay. uh, you're like, okay. it's one and you're up and you're, you're Because otherwise you're, you're saying that the alarm would go off and you would just kind of, would you? I wouldn't hit snooze. I would just shut my alarm off. But would you go back then, to sleep? And then pray that I wouldn't go back to sleep. Okay. But I'm just laying there like, I don't want to get out of Dude, bed. Dude, if I don't get up, I go right back to sleep. <laughs> That'd be dangerous so, for me. I mean, and then there would be times where uh, one of my kids would come in and they'd be like, Dad, dad, you have to get up. So kind of a little role reversal there. So <laughs> the five, kids, four, three, two, one. one. All right. Yeah, so that's worked. Uh, so, but so then, what you're starting your day with Jesus could look like is, hey, for me, it's like five, four, three, two, one. I'm up. I'm sitting at the edge of my bed. Mm-hmm. I'm standing up. Yeah. All right, Lord, you got to do something today. Yeah. I'm here. It is yep. here. I am. Whatever. Yep. Just that. Just that. Yep. That first moment, right? It could be something as simple as that mm-hmm. right it doesn't mean that you have to have uh this this long drawn out session of bible whithersoeverists all right but maybe you do yes. maybe you get up and you sure. spend your morning you're going to sure. spend time in the word you're going to do yeah. you know, do some worship cool yeah rock and roll do it but I, I know for me this has been my practice same thing very similar so when my alarm goes off i turn it off i have to i have to swing my legs out right away because i'm a very deep sleeper and i will not get up if i don't right away but the first thing, and it's just become a pattern, is to remember that, meditate on that scripture, uh, that the Lord's mercy is new every morning. Mm. So my feet hit the floor and I say, I say almost the same thing every morning. Lord, I need your mercy today. You said your mercies are new every morning. Um, extend your mercy. Here it is, the morning. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I, I, I just need woke it. up and I already need it. I need it. I need it, Lord. I need your, your new mercies. Your mercies are new. I need new mercies. Um, and that gets me up and going and and uh, out okay. to the secret place for me. So you just hit on something, and, and Ryan talked about this yesterday. I wanna I wanna revisit this the idea of meditation. Mm-hmm. Right? He says, "Hey, this is yes. this is something I meditated on." That's yes. something that a lot of times within Christian circles, right? We are like, "Whoa, nee. right?" You know, we uh, you know, thirty nine and a mm-hmm. half foot pole. What kinda, are you a Buddhist? Yeah, right. And <laughs> and we yeah. we automatically assume that meditation is connected to Eastern religions, right? So unpack a little bit. You know, Ryan yeah. hit on this yesterday, but unpack a little bit mm-hmm. what 
when we talk about meditation mm-hmm. in a biblical sense, what does that mean? Well, I, I think it's I think it's important to even kind of take one step back f- further and look at all all major religions. Like all major religions have meditation as a practice. They all do. All major religions have a flood story. Did you know that? You see a lot. You've got like the, yeah, uh, um, yeah even like the ancient Babylonian, like yeah. the myth of Atrahasis. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. The, it, it, all, all good things, I think, come from God. All truth is God's truth, but it, it does get warped and it gets distorted and and the enemy will take something that's good, you know, and and change it. So what we know, and I think Ryan did a great job of this. What we know about Eastern mysticism or meditation outside of a person of faith is an emptying of the mind. So it's it's you're trying to get to this space where there's nothing in your mind, and then you do something after that. I don't know what. <laughs> I'm not sure what. If you uh, if you're listening and you're like Buddhist or something, yeah. Go ahead and throw it in the comments. What what are you what are you going for? I, I don't know what happens after that, but uh, a biblical form of of meditation is by a reason of practice in the secret place. You have filled your mind over days and days and days, years and years, months, you know, with the word of God, and you begin to think about and meditate on the word of God. And you can't meditate on what isn't there, right? So if you don't have if you don't have that that constant input of the word of God, you're not going to have something to fill your mind with and then to think about. So uh, uh, like Ryan did it, he, he probably even recognized this, but he was sitting in the chair yesterday. And one of the, one of the things he said was, do you ever really stop and think about when Jesus multiplied the loaves and fish? And he sat in that moment for about 40 seconds and he meditated right in front of us. Isn't that strange? I mean, how did he actually do that? How did that actually happen? I know that the, there was just this mon- amount of fish. There was this amount of bread. He's li- he literally did a scriptural meditation right in front of us. It was a pondering. It's a wondering. It's a it's a way to say there's there's a truth in the core of this scripture. And, and like a gold miner, I want to dig this out by thinking carefully about it, by even asking the Holy Spirit to enlighten us. Mm. Now, I heard, and I... And I I forgot to look this back up, so I might misattribute this. If so, my apologies. But it seems like I heard at some point in my life that within the Jewish worldview and the Jewish perspective, right, meditation is is looking at Scripture as if it is a, a gemstone. Mm. Again, if, if I'm misattributing this, I'm sorry. Mm. I still think it's a cool way to look at it right but if you think of scripture as a as a gemstone right gemstones have multiple facets Mm -hmm. right so so when we meditate on scripture it's like we take that that gemstone and we turn oh oh, look at that oh look at that Mm -hmm. facet oh you know and we and we kind of look at it from all these different Mm -hmm. angles right way yeah so so what you're saying like how did he how did man Mm -hmm. like if i had to make these loaves and fishes spread to feed 15,000. Like how would I have done that? I have no idea, man. How, how mm-hmm. could he have done it? Did he, did he do this? Did he do that? Did he do that? Right. You're, you're, you're sitting in that space, like you just said, and, and thinking through it and on it. And what happens when we meditate on the word of God is I, th- I think the word of God, uh, the person of God, there's, there's an infinite amount of these little dots out in, in the ether, right? There's these connection points. And the more that we meditate on the word of God, the more these dots become connected. Mm. Like the the clearer the picture is of who Jesus is, who God the Father is. It, we, we learn more about his character and his nature as we meditate on the word. Like, oh man, you know, uh, I think the reason that Abraham could take his son Isaac and, and, and literally kill the son of the promises because he believed he was Jesus. Mm. Like he, he had to have believed <laughs> that Isaac was the coming Messiah that God had promised mm-hmm. and that God was going to, God, he, Abraham said, oh, he'll raise him from the dead. He'll raise Isaac from the dead. That's why he could kill his own blood son. Things that you begin to think about, like these connections, you can't make these connections. You can't understand these things until you put them in and you allow the Lord to begin to speak to you. Um, uh, meditation is very important. Mm-hmm. Very important. Yeah. So yeah, it's not empty in your mind. It's no. it's filling it. So and the beauty is, this is something that you can do. Maybe maybe you work in a trailer factory. Or you're mm-hmm. a pharmacist. Or you're a yeah 
professional basketball player. I don't mm. know. Right. These are things like mm -hmm. you can do this wherever you are. Yes. Right. Hey, man, this is what I read last. Like, let's let's think about that. I'm so mine, like the thing I'm chewing on, right? I'll share this. Um This is good. Yesterday, right, I was reading in towards the end of First Samuel. Yeah, yeah, this would this would have been yesterday. Reading in First Samuel. And it's it's where Saul goes to the medium. <laughs> yeah. And and so in this medium summons the spirit of Samuel. And it's really because because then my brain is like, I'm like, where did she summon him from? And then Samuel makes the comment to Saul, this king who's proven that he's he's not a great guy, lives in disobedience to God. Mm -hmm. Samuel tells Saul, hey, the spirit of Samuel that has been called up by the medium. Right. The spirit of Samuel tells Saul, hey, tomorrow you're going to be with me. And I'm like, mm. wait, what? Is, I mean, clearly, what does he mean by that? Does it just mean? He's he's going to be dead also, or they will be in the same post life existence location. Like I mean, yeah, you just get your brain going, and you and yeah. you and you're like, okay, well, yeah. man, what is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's well, fun. And Ryan said that yesterday. He said, "Look, there's there's all sorts of mystery, and there's all sorts of things in the Word of God that we're going to read, and we're going to be like, just like you just said." You're like how, how did how did how did Saul speak to dead Samuel? Like how did this even happen? And there's going to be mysteries. There's going to be things we're not going to understand. Mm -hmm. But if we don't go looking for it, you know, I was talking with Chad, our tech director, yesterday, and I was thinking about the disciplines. And an old school phrase came to my mind. Josh, you're going to like how, this. How old school? <laughs> I mean, it's real old. The spiritual disciplines and the spiritual practices, uh, they're the fountain of grace where the blessings pour out. Right. There's, a, there's a song in there somewhere. Is there a song? What is the song? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, where, or no, it's the grace. How does it, how does that phrase go? Say it again. How you the, just the grace. It. Uh, it's, it's the fount of blessing uh, or, or no, the fount of grace where the blessings pour out or something like that. I would have to go back and look. Google I mean, I, I like the, I like the sound it. of it. But the idea is that you're putting yourself in a place where you can access the character and nature of God. God is not a wizard. Like he's not some genie and he honors our free will. Like he's not just going to be like sprinkle some magic spiritual dust on us and change our hearts and minds. He expects us to meet us. And I, I also loved what Ryan said, you know, it's not proportional. There's no equal ratio with our decisions and God's response. Mm. <laughs> That's, that's really, it, when we make a, a microscopic millimeter, nanometer sort of approach to God, he comes miles mm -hmm. and light years to us. Like he, his blessing in response to the little, little things that we do. And so the, the whole idea, I think of this series is to get into a space and a place and begin to habitually practice things that access the goodness and blessings of God. We're not going to get him. You'll get some by, by just his favor, right? Mm -hmm. But you won't get everything that he has for you unless you get to that place. And I know that sounds like works. We're not talking about heaven, though. Notice that. Right. We're talking about the glory of life. And that's and that's an important distinction, right? I think sometimes yeah. we, we throw the baby out with the bathwater. Think, well, I don't want to make this a works thing. Uh, and that's where, you know, Dallas Willard, we've referenced him multiple times in the podcast. Mm -hmm. He says, you know... Uh, what oh uh, now totally gonna blank like the effort you know grace is not opposed to effort it's opposed to earning yes right like like the things we do mm -hmm. do not earn us salvation mm -hmm. they do not earn us the love of God right but but there is still something we are called to do mm -hmm. right and it's it's out of that that love gratitude you know. Mm -hmm recognition of how far God has come mm -hmm. like hey like he's come miles. Yeah, I I can move inches. He came from eternity and became finite. I mean, we just celebrated Christmas, the glory and the wonder of Christmas that God, the divine, the deity, he became a person like us, like mm -hmm. he took on flesh. And um, I do, I with what you were saying, I, the, the word came to my mind was that we need to work out our salvation. That's in the Bible. With fear and trembling, <laughs> right? So like we are saved, like- in space and time, it's it's a it's an absolute eternal fact, right? 
But in the 80, 90 years that we get, we're working it out. We're figuring it out on a moment by moment basis, which is the practices. But there's also, you see throughout scripture, Peter talks about this uh, in particular, right? But this idea of enduring, mm-hmm. right? Like in, in that, you know, you sit in that space, right? And, and not just in, in uh, Peter, like mm-hmm. Jesus makes references to this too, right? Like there's, there's that initial salvation but there also has to be an enduring mm. right because scripture talks about those that that don't endure right they've fallen away yeah they don't, right and and yeah i think the practices are a, mm-hmm. a part of that enduring how do we how do we maintain what you just hit on yeah uh, all right tra- chase well, it down chase what it you down. just said there really it, it really stood out to me ryan said this and i loved that he said this the practices and the disciplines are a grind, mm. right? Like when we come before the Lord, uh, it's not all this like hair standing up on your neck and like this amazing, like life changing, altering no, that's, experience. That's good. That's good. You know, Ryan really spoke some truth there by saying, look, th- sometimes it's a grind to do what's right, to do, uh, to obey God. When God says, uh, I want to be with you. Jesus says, I want to spend time with you. I love you. I want to pour out my blessings on you. And you're like, mah, mah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You've got this <laughs> stiff neck and this stiff upper lip. And so I think part of this series is to say, look, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, make a choice, make a choice and grind, do it, do it, get after it. Um, and I think that that hits on something, right? And I just want to unpack that a little bit more. I think sometimes we have to, check our expectations mm. right because yeah. because i think you're gonna get frustrated you're gonna be be yeah. really discouraged if let's say let's say we're talking about time in the word mm-hmm. and time in the secret place if you go into it and you and you have this expectation that every time you crack the cover of your, of your bible <laughs> every time you pray every time you you yeah. sit in a moment of of worship through song or some other uh, some other medium yeah. really, like that it's just gonna be this this mountaintop like glory of the Parting Lord of the surrounds clouds. me, you know, moment, <laughs> I think you're going to be really discouraged yeah. because it isn't always like that. No. Right there. Maybe it's in this, you know, big way. That's, I love, I love, you know, you, you see after, um, oh, well, dude, which again, for if you're watching and listening, you were at the, the worship and vision meeting, you heard a fantastic message about mm-hmm. first Kings 18. You knocked it out of the park. It's kind, sir. But right, right after that event, Right, you see Elijah freaks out because Jezebel wants to kill him. He goes yep. into this into this Depression. desert place. He yeah. wants to die. Yes. He wants to die. He's suicidal. So so he's led, oh, he's led man. by the Lord wow. further in. And there, wow. like he has this encounter mm-hmm. uh with with the voice of God, right? He sees the fire, he sees the whirlwind, he sees all these things, the mm-hmm. earthquake, and it says God wasn't in those. Eventually, we see that. That God speaks to Elijah in this still small voice. The thing I love about that is we have other occasions in Scripture where God does speak through fire, mm-hmm. through a whirlwind, pillars through, of cloud, through all these yep. things, right? Like yep. all these ways. I think so. God is saying, "Hey, I'm not always going to communicate with you the mm-hmm. same way. It's not always going to be this this uh, you know fantastic display right. that is is." evident to all mm-hmm. right sometimes it's that that still small voice yeah so we have to we have to temper our expectations uh and, and not think oh every time i do this it's going to be this fantastic display mm-hmm. sometimes it's, it's going to be the whisper and you're going to miss it mm-hmm. if you only if you only expect yeah something you know grandiose well and that's what faith is all about like like hebrews tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen right so when we come to god we open up his word we come to a time of prayer a time of worship whatever that is in the secret place we have to come believing that whether we feel Mm. something or not god's word is true he's accomplishing things that we just don't know we don't know what he's doing the the kind of subterranean Mm. heart work that he's doing uh, but we've got to avail ourselves to that time right otherwise we, we've made it more about an experience yeah more about an emotional yeah. response rather than obedience than we have made it about you know actually spending time with jesus mm-hmm. right if we equate and this is the danger right like you know we've talked mm-hmm. before about kind of coming out of uh you know more charismatic mm-hmm. right that can be a danger mm-hmm. right that we, we we elevate the experience 
uh, over any real substance. Mm-hmm. Like, ooh, well, I I feel the presence of God. Right. Maybe, maybe. All right. Right, but but right. That does not necessarily mean you got like like you said, like the hair on my neck didn't stand up. Right. I didn't get goosebumps. Yeah. I didn't like there wasn't. I didn't start crying. You know, spontaneously. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes those things happen. Yes. Sometimes those things happen, mm-hmm. and that is that's a legitimate move of God. I'm not I'm not trying to to deny that or question that. But if but if if we only ever think God is there, if His presence is only ever there, if we feel mm. fill in the blank, I think we've 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 put God in this itty bitty box. That's and uh, He's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to live in that box. An- anthropomorphism, right? That's such, that's, a, such a fancy word. I like it. That's like making God into our own image. Like yes. if God will will do and jump through the hoops that we that we set for Him, He will behave in this sort of way, like He's some kind of circus act. When He is He is in heaven, mm. the, the sun and the moon has a circuit, a pattern, and He controls it every day. Uh, yeah. Yep. When uh, when Solomon builds his temple, right? He's like, "Here, Lord, I, I made you this really cool house," and, <laughs> and God is like, "You think you think that can contain me, bro?" I mean, this is a pretty phenomenal uh, structure, yeah, like gold plated right? stuff, and like stuff we think is important, right? Yeah. Uh, Solomon's temple couldn't contain him. Yeah. The the drywall and, and paint of radiant life, yeah. cannot contain him. Amen. Your living room cannot contain him. Uh, we need to, yeah, we need to not put him in our our little. Little mm-hmm. boxes, anthropomorphism, super fancy, super fancy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm just so excited, Josh, and you, you, viewers watching and and listeners listening, you could probably tell Josh and I get pretty geeked about uh, the disciplines and the practices, just because we personally, the little bit that we have chosen in our own lives uh, to to be involved in these kinds of things. We have seen such such amazing good change in our own hearts and minds. Mm. Um, I, I just I love that song, "The Blood" uh, from the Bethel album. Simple, uh, you know, everything's changed. It's getting harder to recognize mm. the person I was before I encountered Christ, and it, that should be that should be daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. You know, we should be able to look back and say. I'm I'm changing. I'm not the person that I was, and it, it that change happens through the practices and disciplines. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. Speaking of songs, real quick, I yeah. want to give you a major shout out for throwing in a little old school, old school jam. Which yesterday, which one was it? In the secret. Okay, so Haley yeah. meant she messaged me last <laughs> night. She said she she grabbed Chris, her husband, and they were like, they did this old school song, but she said a closer. And I was like, does she think that Raise a Hallelujah is an old school worship song? I was like, this is oh. making you very young, Haley. But I don't think that's what she's talking about. Hmm. She was either talking about how deep the father's love for us, which well, is well, a I mean, okay, so that's that's, that's even way that's even back. older than yeah. you know, in the secret. But in the secret, this Sonic is like your Sonic Blood, bro. <laughs> yeah. Now, although I would yes. say my favorite version is on the insider. Scalleluia 2 album Ooh, Insiders they were uh, a ska one. band out of Detroit okay uh, you guys look it up Insiders Scalleluia 2 it's like a punk rock ska version of The Secret which is which is kind of hilarious actually given the content like, of the song in the secret in the quiet place yeah. <laughs> There you go <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it was going to be the right right song that's why uh, I play bass and don't sing that's uh <laughs> uh that was formative for me, man. Late nineties, early two thousands. Oh yeah, uh, I mean that Sonic Flood album was, was music a big part of worship. coming out of that out mm-hmm. of that area. Yeah. yeah. So, but uh, hey, we're gonna keep this conversation going again. We're, I think we're yeah. talking about Secret Place next week as well. Mm-hmm. So, if you have questions, email them to us, Josh at the Radiant Life Church. Mm-hmm. Uh, we would. Uh, I don't know if we'll have answers, but maybe we'll take a stab at it. We'll so. meditate on it. Oh man, see that I full see what circle. you just did there. Hey, would you like and subscribe to this podcast? I'm going to give a, a shout out to uh, Tammy Chupp. Tammy Chupp's been been sharing uh, Radiant Reflections on her Facebook page. I've been seeing it, Tammy. And I've been seeing, uh, there was a thread that I saw this last week. Someone, I didn't notice their names. I didn't know who they were. But they specifically said, uh, because Tammy had shared the Radiant Reflections, she's like, I think I need to check out your church online. Oh. Which is really cool, nice. you know? Uh, so keep doing that. Keep sharing your uh, the podcast on your social media platforms. Like and share, rate, 
review, uh, yeah, even taking the YouTube feed, the YouTube video and sharing that on your social media platforms mm -hmm. is a fantastic way to see the channel grow, to see the podcast grow. Uh, we hope you've been blessed. Yeah, rock and roll. Yeah. And we uh, look forward to continuing this conversation with you next week in episode 16. Until then, see you later. Bye.